All right, all right. Uh, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Campus Connection here on the Family Station. Love 101. I am Jonathan Fletcher, and unfortunately, my co-host, Anesta Samuels, is not here with us this evening. But, you know, we have to do what we have to do. So, greetings to you if you're listening to us on the FM band. That's 101.135 or 7. Or if you're listening on the website, www.love101.org. Or if you're watching us live and direct right now on Facebook or on YouTube at Love 101 FM Jamaica, big up yourself. And I want you right now, if you are watching us on live, Please go ahead and share the live stream. Share it to a student, a teacher, a parent, someone who you think would find value from this evening's program because we're talking about youth leadership. That's what we're focusing on this evening inside Campus Connection. We want to explore um, that topic. So I want you to be a part of the conversation. You can also send us a WhatsApp message at 876-997-3125. That's 876-997-3125. I want to hear from you. So you can go ahead and send in your message. You can send a comment via the live stream as well. We'd want to ensure that we keep the conversation going so let's go straight into what we will be doing this evening first we will have education news and bulletin and then at 5 40 thereabout we'll have honor roll with mrs eileen kohal bailey and she is the tibet teacher of the year at 5 50 thereabout we'll be having i chose christ by sean palmer saint mary high school student and then, of course, we go straight into our discussion, youth leadership with Miss Abigail Watt, head girl of the Black River High School, Miss Kimberly Sims, national president of Jamaica Prefects Association, and Mr. Mickton Ebanks, senior teacher at the Black River High School. And we just, you know, we have a power packed panel this evening. So you want to stick and stay for the discussion because the reality is that youth leadership is a practice of young people exercising authority over themselves or others and of course we'll discuss the dynamics of having this awesome responsibility benefits the values of youth leadership and balancing academics with various tasks because you know if you're a youth leader you still have school going on more than likely so you have to learn how to balance between the two all right, that makes sense, right? Yeah, man, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. All right, so let's get straight into the show. We'll have education news and bulletin. And this, of course, will be done by David Sutton, first year communication student at NCU. <laughs> Education News and Bulletin for Tuesday, January 30, here inside Campus Connection. 14-year-old prodigy Jada Wright is welcomed at the University of Technology Jamaica as its youngest student ever. The young scholar attended an introductory meeting at the renowned institution on January 16, where she was welcomed with open arms by University President Dr. Kevin Brown and other members of the leadership team. 
Jada is pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science in the School of Computing and Information Technology, Faculty of Engineering and Computing. Despite her age, the young UTech student is already a high achiever, succeeding in her primary exit profile exam, which earned her a place at the Hampton School in her home parish of St. Elizabeth, while studying to sit two CSEC subjects, both of which she received with grade ones. In high school, Jada achieved an additional seven grade ones in CSEC and found the time to brainstorm and establish a homeschool online-based program at her parents' institution, the Caribbean Online Academy. This new venture is currently being incubated at UTech Jamaica's Technology Innovation Center. The budding computer software engineer is not taunted by this new part of her journey and is eager to take on every opportunity and challenge that lies ahead. Technical and Vocational Education Training, TVET, at the Manning School in Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland, has received a major donation from the New York chapter of its Past Students Association. The chapter last Wednesday gave 2.9 million Jamaican dollars to the institution's home economics department. Eileen Kohal Bailey, head of the school's home economics department and LASCO's Ministry of Education and Youth's Teacher of the Year for 2023-2024, was happy for the investment and shared that it will help push the school's TVET and STEM programs forward. Wilma Winter, president of the Manning School's New York chapter, says that their goal is to pay it forward and help maintain the high quality of education at the institution. Steve Gordon, principal of the Westmoreland based school, expressed his appreciation for the commitment of the past students. He added that their noble contribution is a reminder to current students of the importance of maintaining their promise to give back for the betterment of the institution. Mr. Gordon went on to reassure the New York chapter that every cent of their financial donation is being used as they have requested. In an effort to properly engage the youth in St. James, Councillor Richard Vernon, the Deputy Mayor of Montego Bay, has announced plans for the reopening of the Montego Bay Boys and Girls Club. The announcement was made during a ceremony on Thursday, January 25, to rename River Bay Road, where the club is located, to Gladstone Lawrence Road in honor of the founder. The purpose of the renaming initiative is to commemorate Gladstone, a.k.a. Pop, Lawrence's many years of devoted service to Montego Bay. The deputy mayor described the reopening as a beacon of the resocialization of the marginalized and unattached youth of Montego Bay. During his speech, the Honorable Homer Davis, the Minister of State in the Office of the Prime Minister West, emphasized the significant impact of the club under Mr. Lawrence's management. He noted that Pop Lawrence's powerful leadership has been unmatched and that he has done a great deal to support Montego Bay's inner city youths in particular. Councillor Vernon has announced that the club will reopen on Monday, January 29, the late honoree's birthday anniversary. Now for the bulletin. ABT Productions presents A Better Tomorrow happening Friday, February 2 at 5 p.m. at Mandela Park Halfway Tree, featuring Ryan Mark, Gotti Gotti, Nadine Blair, DJ Troy, Karen Ennis, Kevin Smith, Joanna, Denny, Oben Medley, and Mr. J. Admission free. The Student Care Center's Cup Fest Education Fair Tour makes their stop in Jamaica on February 10, 2024 at the Jamaica Pegasus. Meet with representatives from colleges and universities. Learn about school and get your questions answered. And learn about opportunities available to Caribbean students. Admission free. Register today at cupfestinternational.com. That's all the news we have for you today on Education News and Bulletin, Inside Campus Connection. I'm David Sutton. 
All right, all right. Thank you so much, David, for bringing us education news and bulletin. And David is a first year communication student at NCU. All right, so we have a question for you this evening. The question is, are we doing enough as a society to transform our youth into positive leaders? You can, of course, send us your responses to 876-997-3125 via WhatsApp. That's 876-997-3125. Or you can comment on our live stream at Love101FM Jamaica. That's on Facebook or on YouTube. All right. Cool, 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 cool. I am getting a bit excited because I'm going to be talking to Mrs. Eileen Kohal bailey she is the MOEY Lasco JTC Tivet Teacher of the Year. She's a professional teacher for over 30 years, head of home economics department of the Manning School, master teacher, mentor, assessor, verifier, trainer of trainers. Um, let me see what else. She is, of course, a, a teacher. She has taught at the UE Open Campus, events management and housekeeping, Northern Zone coordinator for the Wesleyan Women, head of Man in School Mentorship Program, which was recently launched. She is research chair for the Jamaica Home Economics Association, JHEA. And it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. You know, we're talking to someone who um, is doing a lot and has done a lot. And so I'm very excited and pleased to welcome none other than Mrs. Bailey. Mrs. Bailey, good evening. How are you doing? Good evening, and thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's our pleasure to have you inside our honor roll. But I listed a number of, you know, your achievements just now. But I want to get to know Mrs. Bailey. So in a sentence or two, who is Mrs. Bailey? Mrs. Bailey, I'm Eileen Cahal Bailey. Thanks again for having me. Mm -hmm. I love to teach. Mm. And I love to interact with my students. They are the future. If we ignore them, who's going to take care of them? So that mm -hmm. is my job. Yes. And not only for the students that I teach, I have to interact with other persons because, and also to look back at the students and not just preparing them with a curriculum. I am yes. fitting them and outfitting them for life. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So this love that you have for teaching, what inspired the love? What inspires the love even to this day? I am a go-getter. Mm. I am self-motivated and I believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Love it, love it. Yes. And so I believe that if I want to do a job, I'm going to do it well. Mm -hmm. So my journey in teaching is that I started out working in other jobs, yes, clerical work, but I see that there was just a calling. I must say, mm -hmm. it's a ministry. Mm. Yes. And if I were to look at the greatest teacher, Jesus himself, yes. why not follow in his footsteps? Yes. So, you have to first love people and love what you do. Powerful, so, powerful. That is what inspires me daily. Awesome, awesome. So, I am, I am, my mind is going back to little Eileen, you know, coming up um, over the years. Did you always see yourself becoming a teacher? No. Mm. My first wish was that I would be working with money. Yeah, man. I'd be working in the bank as an economist or, you know, somebody working there, financial. Interesting. Something. But, tell you what, when I went mm -hmm. to a class, I realized that, boy, this was not my calling. Not my at all. <laughs> and I headed down to the home economics department. So the thing that I chose last, I am mm -hmm. No, it is first. Wait, wait, wait. Let's break that down. <laughs> Let's break yeah. that down. The thing you chose last, it became first. I think that there's a scripture that says, um, the stone the builder refused 
became the chief cornerstone. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing that teaching now is your chief cornerstone. Right, and a home economics teacher. So I'm still mm -hmm. doing economics, <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah. economics. yes, <laughs> yes. And there are still topics that are applicable because you have to still teach budgeting, teach students how to use their money. Because as I said before, I'm preparing them for life. So, a young teacher may be listening or watching right now, um, and she or he may be struggling with this generation, because you know this generation is a whole different generation mm -hmm. from um, those before. What advice would you give? Could you share some strategies that they can employ um, to be successful in the classroom? Yes, and as we speak, I have one right here with me this afternoon. Oh, you know, she's learning. But I'm here to yes. tell you first, love what you do and mm -hmm. love people. And you must be passionate. You must be prepared. You are going into the classroom. You are going to teach. You are going in there mm -hmm. to make a difference. Not just that you have a curriculum and you must finish it. Because many a times students come to us, especially we are home economics teachers, TV teachers, Somehow they trust us, you know, as if we are guidance mm. course. But when they come, if the information that what they're passing on to us, if it's too sensitive, then I know I'm going to steer them to the guidance course. But sometimes they will come to you with something that you might consider trivial, but to them it's yes. something important. So I am saying, lend a helping hand, give a listening ear. And I'm saying to you, if mm -hmm. you have chosen to teach, teach. Because you are mm. going to be a difference. You are not just touching a person who is before you and you must finish cake making, making a dress or whatever, teaching them about the sciences or whatever. Whatever you do, make an impression on them, a positive impression. Because mm -hmm. what you will learn today is going to help you tomorrow. Powerful, and I'm, absolutely I'm powerful. That for that mm -hmm. teacher who took me in our home economics class, in our foods class, and that is um, Mrs. Joni Finnegan. She took mm -hmm. me there. And I'm, as we said before, the thing that I chose last. Yes, became first. In my life. And I have yes. part of knowledge. And you know, as I am a Tibet instructor, mm -hmm. and I can tell anybody that Tibet touch every aspect of every person's life. If you're looking mm -hmm. at the Basic needs, check Tibet. Because mm -hmm. you want a house to be built, check Tibet. And we have to live in houses, don't we? Absolutely. Um, food, food to eat, check a Tibet teacher. You must mm -hmm. eat. No matter what other profession that you're in or other area of study, you have to wear clothes. Basic needs. Who provides it? It's Tibet. Absolutely. And we have to look now. It is Tibet. Um, coupled with steam. So we are not just isolated. Once upon a time, TVET and home economics and every other discipline within TVET would be on the back burner. But when you want to have productivity, where do you mm -hmm. turn to? The TVET educator. We yes. are flexible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to take a quick break. Loving the conversation here inside Honor Roll. Inside Campus Connection on the Family Station, Love 101. But we have to take a quick break and we'll be right back after these messages. When you say fast rich, you say electrical. SWA cables, conduits, transformers, and breakers. When you say fast rich, you say lighting, chandeliers, and more. When you say fast rich, you say LEDs and solar water heaters. Fast rich is electrical, lighting, solar, and LEDs. Visit us today, Kingston, Manville, and Montego Bay. Fast rich. <laughs> All right, welcome, welcome back to Campus Connection on the Family Station Love 101. If you're just joining us, we are having a very interesting discussion with Mrs. Eileen Kohal Bailey. She is the MOEY Lasco Tivet Teacher of the Year. Um, and we are having a very, very, very insightful discussion. If you are a young teacher, if you are a student, um, this discussion 
Yeah, I, I'd, I'd advise you to listen in. Um, Mrs. Bailey, before the break, we were you were sharing with us some strategies that, you know, some young teachers could employ, if you will, to make their experience better. But how has family helped you um, over the years in the classroom? What kind of support um, has your family given you over the years? Well, I come from a family of, yes, my sisters are teachers. Most of them are teachers. They are, you know, even nice. if they don't stay, yes, we have them. And my children, I have two children, and they were in that direction too. Mm -hmm. But I'll continue to encourage them to, you know, keep the fire burning. And even yes. if they're not doing really it now, for the time being, I know that they're going to get back into it. Mm -hmm. And I must mm -hmm. say, thank God for my husband. Every move I make, he's mm -hmm. right there beside me. Big Every up, Mr. Bailey. <laughs> Big up, Mr. Bailey. Yes. <laughs> and yes, and my school family too. They mm -hmm. are, yes. But again, if I go back to how I would encourage young teachers, or teachers on the whole, because I'm a mentor. Mm -hmm. And I can go back to my actual research last year that I looked at. And I use what I call the school model, S-C-H-O-O-L. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the first thing is sincerity. I yes. must be sincere. I must put mm. myself in my students' shoe because they have feelings. Don't think because we are teachers, we are the big bad boss, and we must go in there and kill them. No. We must be sincere. I have to look at capacity building. Mm -hmm. We have to look at the resources that we have, the human resource and also the physical resource. Yes. As a human resource, I must look at my skills, my interests, and my abilities, and how I'm going to use that to get to my students. So I'm going to engage mm -hmm. them, put them there. Um, I'm looking at honesty. Honesty might be a little bit different from being sincere. As an educator, I have persons interested in my care. So I yes. must be truthful and be able to be trusted. When I do that, my students are depending on me and not only my students. Mm -hmm. The parents are depending on me. My school is depending on me. And mm -hmm. on the whole, the country is depending on me. And my students are going to go out into the world because the world is an oyster. Persons are moving. We're not stuck in one place. So I have to be honest with all that I am and help my students because they are in my care. Yes. I must be organized. We have to look at it. Organization, both in the physical and in the virtual space. Because mm -hmm. we, know we have to expect the unexpected. So yes. I, do, I would make sure that because again I have a busy life. For this year, I'm gonna be so busy. Plus, mm -hmm. yes, I'm also a master teacher. So busy, 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 busy. So what I have to do, I have to think ahead. So what I have to do, populate my Google Classroom, do what I utilize whatever technological tools I can use. And my favorite would be Nearpod and Animoto. And you use the quizzes and otherwise. So I am able to fast forward. So at the beginning of the year, I'm going to go through my curriculum. I'm going to think of each topic, look at the possible activities that can be done with it. And so I'm going to be putting more than one piece of work in there. Topic by topic. Organized in activities. Because you have to understand now that you have different students. So nice. you have to be varied. Opportunity, in other words, oh, as an educator, I need to give my students opportunities in and outside of the classroom. But let us stay at the classroom right now. When mm -hmm. I am teaching, I must give them the opportunity to interrelate with me, to tell me things, and I, in turn, must give them back feedback. So I must provide the opportunities that my students need. So if it is possible for them to do something, but if I don't give them the opportunity, how will they do it? Yes. If you don't question them, and we again, we have to think of 
how we question students now because we are thinking of the four C's. So critical thinking. We have a mm -hmm. team of critical thinkers. So we have to use real world scenarios, open ended questions, and draw back from their knowledge. What do they know? What do we want them to know? Even though we have a syllabus, but we have to um, put the syllabus in a way, the information in a way that the students can gravitate, they can towards it. And Absolutely. That and that they can learn. And the L, learning. Mm -hmm. With learning, we have to understand first and foremost, our students have needs. We have yes. needs ahead of it, right in front of us. So one way that I do is that at the beginning of the school year, I would send out a Google form to capture, do you like, are you an auditory learner? Do you like to do things with your hands? Do you mm. So I get from them, what, how do you want to learn? That's powerful. So you have to put a little of that into each lesson so that each of your learners who are there with you can get something out of the lesson. That's powerful. Right. And your assessment strategies have to be varied. So we have Boy. to Right. Boy, Mrs. Bailey, I can see why you are the MOE Alaska JTC Tibet Teacher of the Year. And I just want to thank you so much for being a part of Campus Connection this evening. We really are excited about what you'll be able to do this year and the years to come. And we just want to encourage you to continue doing what you're doing. We need more teachers like you in the educational industry. So thanks again, and all the very best for the future. Thank you, and big up to my school and to my family and to all my students, past and present. Thank you for having me. Who knows? So awesome. <laughs> That's the Evo Iwa Alaska JTC Tibet Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Eileen Kohal Bailey. Wonderful, wonderful lady, and an even greater educator want to thank her again for being a part of the show all right so let's go straight into i chose christ and this is by sean palmer six form student at saint mary high my name is sean palmer a six form humanity student at the saint mary high school my testimony is a bit simple but profound nonetheless you know a while back um you know praying and so on the lord would have said to me you're good you're entering a season of elevation and I, at the time i didn't really understand it but you know i i took that with me and i and i went through um out on the journey little did i know what the lord would have had in store you know i i would have had the opportunity or i saw an opportunity to, to attend a beach clean up and I was like should I go or should I not go and you know on the day of it I I I the voice of the voice of the Lord said to me go man go to this beach clean up and I got dressed and I went little did I know that that one instance of obedience would have changed my life for the better now I am basking in the favor of the Lord having received two scholarships from that encounter, from that beach cleanup, having gone on life-changing adventures, having met people who are generally interested in uplifting, empowering, and just making a difference in their surroundings and helping me to do the same. I tell you that that one instance of obedience will have changed my life for the better. And I am today still basking in the favor of the Lord. So I chose Christ, you should too. Powerful testimony there from Sean Peter, sixth form student from the St. Mary High School. We want to thank Sean for boldly sharing with us why he chose Christ and you should too. After this break, we'll be speaking with several educated amazing people on the topic of youth leadership so you want to stick and stay with us as we go for these messages no. 
Sunday, February 4 is World Cancer Day. Close the care gap. This Friday, February 2, Love 101 will be live on location at the Jamaica Cancer Society and we'll talk up the things, share information that you should know or need to be reminded about this dreaded disease. And here's something extra. If you have never done a pap smear or never done one in four years or if you are unemployed and could do with a little help, you could qualify for a free pap smear. Call 876 301 or 876 579 7097 this Thursday, February 1, to register. That's 876 301 0346 or 579 7097. Women, make your appointment at the Jamaica Cancer Society any weekday or visit your doctor. Get those mammograms or pap smears done. And men, your annual prostate check. It is that important. Listen for the highlights and information givings this Friday, February 2 at 8.30 a.m. right here on Love 101, The Family Station. Are we doing enough as a society to transform our youth into positive leaders? That's one of the main questions that we want to get answered this evening inside Campus Connection as we focus on youth leadership. We want to get down um, and really explore the different facets of youth leadership. And with us this evening, we have Miss Abigail Watt, head girl of the Black River High School. We have Miss Kimberly Sims, national president of the Jamaica Prefix Association. And of course, Mr. Ibank, senior teacher of the Black River High School. Let's bring our guests on. Awesome, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, sir. And good evening, everyone. And of All course, right. good in Jamaica, the Black River High School family. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, we are very excited to have you a part of this discussion this evening. Um, before we get into the discussion, we have our campus vox pop. So we'll have those right now. So it's voice notes from youth who were at the Forum for Innovations in Teaching held last week at the National Arena, January 25 to 27 in relation to, of course, our questions but before that we will um ask this question to our panelists are we doing enough as a society to transform our youth into positive leaders mr ibanks your thoughts your opening statement um to be honest yes we are and i think one of the main things that we do to to, to develop this leadership in students is by having, as, as you're right with us now, the Prefects Association. And I think that this gives a chance to these students to be able to be to be leaders. We give them responsibilities in schools. And so by doing this, mm -hmm. they have a sense of responsibility. So that is something that we have been doing over the years. And I think oh, the cool. Prefects Association is an excellent job with that. Mm. <laughs> I see Kimberly smiling <laughs> as she heard that just now. Kimberly, your thoughts? All right. So I do agree with Mr. Ibanks. A lot is being done in Jamaica, definitely. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, more is mm. there to be done. More can be completed. Mm. You know, for this, this society, we want for all of our students to have a relation to student leadership not just students who are already seen as leaders, but also those who might not have been given that chance, given that opportunity to be mentored from early and to develop and be nurtured into that leader. Mm, interesting. Um, Abigail, as the head girl of Black River High School, what are your thoughts? Abigail? 
All right, seems as if we're having a bit of technical difficulties. Abigail, you can go ahead and unmute your mic. All right, all right. So while Abigail sorts out things on her end, we'll go straight to the campus Vox Pop. What strategies can educational institutions employ to foster leadership skills in their students? So educational institutions, they can develop leadership programs. Therefore, they collaborate with guidance counselors or even teachers who can help to assist those students in building his Okay, I seem to be having some technical difficulties, but if you can hear me now. Um, continue as a, either a mentor or in their future career and such forth. Young individuals can develop effective leadership skills early by learning to first lead themselves. It is very important that we develop self-autonomy by making decisions, by being in charge of what we do, because the only way to effectively lead others is to be in control of yourself. It is okay for children to say, I want to do this and why. I don't want to do this and why. And when they start to develop these beliefs and values, this is how they can go forward and lead others. Hi. Now, mentorship goes a very far away in our society. We realize that there's a gap in our society these days when it comes on to mentoring youth, especially those who are at tertiary level of studies, which is not necessarily limited to tertiary institutions but also training institutions as well them versus the high schools so mentorship can actually assist in bridging that evident gap that is there between high school students and tertiary level institution students in addition to that mentorship can also assist when you reach out to the high school students and come up with policies and programs instead of doing it to them we collaborate with them and we move forward and we help the young men and young people in general to understand that failure is inevitable in your approach so you will to continue that will lead to your success in life and when you attack the high school all right interesting stuff there from our campus vox pop um from our young people as we continue in our discussion on youth leadership. I just want to pick up everybody in the comment section. Uh, let me just call some names real quick. Tracy Nelson, Deandra, um, Shade Adams, Amaya Morrison, uh, Marsha Lee Banton, Christine Jones, Vicky, Erica Bennett, Yvette Wallace-Gordon, Big up yourself, big up yourself. Please go ahead and share the live stream as we continue in our discussion on youth leadership here inside Campus Connection. All right, so let's break things down a bit with this question. When it comes down to youth leadership, what steps must be taken um, in identifying youth leaders? Sir Ibanks, um, you can go ahead and kickstart that one for us all right so what i do at black river high school to identify the youth leaders i allow the teachers because you know the teachers interact with these students on a daily basis so for example mm -hmm. we what we have for example from seventh grade we have what we call class monitors or class prefects so by the time they're in eighth grade we still have class monitors class prefects at ninth grade we start what we call junior prefects then by 10 mm. 11 then they, they, they become prefect at that point. So I, I, I watch it while all the teachers to look, to observe these students, to see how they interact, to see how they deal with their classmates. So at the end of the day, at the end of each year, these teachers will then present to me a list of students who they say, hey, Mr. Ibanks, these students are extremely good leaders, sir. So I'm recommending them for prefect. So that's the method that I use at Rockford High School. So as to get mm -hmm. the leaders from all over from every class to try to create a balance as best as possible. Yes, yes. That's a very interesting system. Um, Kimberly, based on what Mr. Ibang said just now, as the president of the National Prefect Association, 
I, I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself that you're the prefect of all prefects. That's, that's uh, how I'd like to coin it this evening. Um, what are some of the challenges that you face with interacting the prefects of today, right? Uh, what are some of the challenges that you're facing currently? Could you repeat with interacting the prefects? With the prefects of today. So the prefects that you interact with now, what are some of the challenges that you're experiencing? Okay, so the, a problem or a challenge that many prefects are currently facing is exerting a level of influence. I mm. mean, I was, yes. <laughs> I was at an event the other day and I had the great op opportunity to speak with a few prefects and they outlined a concern that, hey, students are not respecting the prefects at a certain level and so once mm -hmm. prefects speak to them, sometimes in some cases, you know, there is a bit of backlash or persons who simply don't want to listen to them or even the valid case. Well, the, the, the varying cases of just not being too nonchalant or just not caring yeah. on the whole. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, very interesting. Abigail, are you here with us now? Yes. All right. I'm okay. hearing you. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Awesome. All right. Abigail, Kimberly shared just now that one of the challenges that she faces or that she has encountered as the president is that a lot of prefects are saying that they basically they are not receiving the respect that's due to them, right? Um, do you think that social media, and I can't help but think, along this vein do you think that social media has something to do with um adding fuel because it existed before but adding fuel um to the flames of that particular challenge well not even social media alone society mm -hmm. on a whole right has mm -hmm. um a big part to play you know, we have that issue at Black River High School where, you know, prefects are complaining that the students are not listening to them, right? And I, as the head girl, I have to step in, right? The negative, the, the negative things that we see on, on social media, you know, is an influence. But as a school, you know, there there's nothing that we can do about it. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. social media is going to be social media and the society is going to be society, right? Yes. And yeah, that is just how it is. That is just how mm -hmm. it is, right? And that is something that we have to work around and see how best mm -hmm. we can, you know, alleviate or minimize the situation. Okay, staying with you, Abigail. Um, with that being said, what are some of the benefits of being a student leader, of being in leadership? You know, thank you for that question. You know, thank you for mm -hmm. that question. All right. So the, you know, being a student leader presents so many opportunities or benefits, as you said, right? It enhances an individual's communication abilities, right? You know, gaining organizational experience and, you know, one can build network of peers and, you know, mentors that can provide guidance, support throughout your academic and professional journey. And it boosts self-confidence. And it can also allow you to positively impact your school community, just like myself on the radio. No, it has always been a dream. So, you know, thank you for fulfilling <laughs> that. And to, yes. to really to really expand on the point I made where I said that, you know, being a student leader build the ne a network of peers and mentors. I must say that I have, you know, encounter, you know, students, you know, peers who are now best friends, you know, close friends, teachers who are now mentors. And I must take this opportunity to big up the teachers at Black River High School. I always tell people that my teachers are my best friends. They have provided mm. me with so many opportunities. Teachers who play the role of mothers and fathers, you know, 
single parent i must big up taj williams who is now you know live on youtube he's on youtube now mrs banton pusey who has played a tremendous role mr ebanks himself who is such a phenomenal supervisor you know miss richards mm -hmm. our guidance counselor miss miller you know thank you guys for always being there for us you know yes. being there for your students being there for your students and I'm, i am so happy that i got the opportunity to you know highlight our institution because you know black river high school is doing great things we are not there yet a hundred percent but we are getting there and that is all that matters awesome 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 words from a grateful student i'm sure your teachers are beaming with pride i see mr ibanks trying very much to hold back the tears you know it's okay sir it's fine we understand we're going to take a quick break and come back to campus connection we're talking about youth leadership please go ahead and share the live in the meantime in between time and stick and stay with us Mmm, something smells good. When you're cooking or baking, begin with the best. The trusted tradition of Benjamin's vanilla flavorings and colorings. Mix it, stir it, blend it all around and create something spectacular. Whether you're making cakes, custards, puddings, punches, or savory meals, Benjamin's vanilla flavorings and colorings add that special touch to everything. And here's something else special. Benjamin's ginger, nutmeg, cinnamon, anise, and mixed spice are now available in liquids. Yes, everything tastes better with Benjamins. Benjamins, a trusted name for over a century. When you say fast switch, you say electrical. SWA cables, conduits, transformers, and breakers. When you say fast switch, you say lighting, chandeliers, and more. When you say fast switch, you say LEDs and solar water heaters. Fast switch is electrical, lighting, solar, and LEDs. Visit us today, Kingston, Manville, and Montego Bay. Fast switch. Jamaica and its workforce are advancing quickly. Life-changing opportunities are arising. You need training and support. We are the Renewed Heart NSTA Trust, committed to providing you and emerging skills training and opportunities. Come to Heart. We'll help you claim your place in the workforce of the future. welcome welcome back to campus connection on the family station love 101 if you're just joining us i'm jonathan fletcher and we are speaking about youth leadership we have kimberly sims the president of the national prefects association mr ibang senior teacher of the black river high school and abigail watt who is a head girl of the black river high school before the break you know we had a little emotional you know um big up segment very very important though it's always important to show gratitude to those who have positively impacted and even negatively impacted but i'll talk about that another show because sometimes the people who do negative things to us they end up doing it at our benefit without even recognizing um but in continuing the discussion kimberly based on where you sit as the president what are some of the strategies that you'd like to employ to positively influence the generation because you you spoke earlier on the one of the major challenges being that the influence is severely lacking and the respect from peers to prefect um is severely lacking so what are some other strategies you think that can be employed to you know bridge that gap all right some strategies that can be employed i definitely believe some psychosocial sessions and even sessions mm -hmm. for prefects and the wider school community to just interact have that relationship have that bond so that it's no longer prefects being seen as just okay the policeman of the school okay they're gonna mm. take my bracelets they're gonna take out tell me to take out my earrings for them to be able to trust us as youth leaders because a lot of the time they lack trust in us because we are the extension of school administration and i mm -hmm. see miss what nodding her head i'm sure she can agree with me mm -hmm. right so we want to ensure that our prefects have that relationship with the wider school community so that they can feel comfortable sharing with us 
and so that they can feel comfortable enough to know that we have their best interest at heart through enforcing the rules that the school has has said for us to do and it oh, is so oh. important for us to employ these skills in such a way that i would also encourage educational institutions to instill trainings for leadership as early as possible and mm. again i was saying earlier not just for those who possess the inherent ability to lead but also for those right across the bat because you know some are born with that talent but a skill can be learned and if it is mm. that we introduce leadership workshops as early as possible or even to include it into the curriculum then i'm sure that jamaica will receive much more positive results for our students to foster this call to lead interesting very very interesting some leaders are born others are created hmm interesting very interesting so ibanks from the place of a mentor right a youth leader may be listening right now they are severely discouraged they are wondering to themselves that hey you know probably i need to go and fit in and just do what everyone else is doing what do you say to that youth leader right now and let me um let me tell you so when it comes on to and as you said before the moment when I went with my, what miss watt said i am sure that yes. any youth leader out there at this point hearing what she said how she's grateful for her teachers and her mentors i am sure mm -hmm. they would read and say yes i am doing a good thing because let me tell you this sir to be honest sometimes you might feel discouraged but there is mm -hmm. always this student that will come and say sir thank you for this thank you for that sir look what you mm -hmm. did and look at me now so i'm saying it's mm -hmm. the one role to do don't give up on that role and never give up on students because it's one thing these are the future generations we have to mold them mm -hmm. we have to take care of them and if you are able to change one life then you are able to change the world so you have to you, mm -hmm. you have to determine and and i know that look students are going to act up students are going to give trouble but at the end of the day are we going to turn our backs on them no we have to be there for them to encourage them to love them to support them and to do our best to guide them and mm -hmm. trust me this evening is a problem for me just to hear miss Watt say that another students to say that so we i am i can tell the person as a mentor as a, as a student leader i am going to continue and will continue as long as i have life awesome awesome and we really do appreciate your commitment to this generation i just want you to send some fire emojis up in the chat all the persons in the chat right now big things are being said um on this evening's program campus connection on the family station love 101 having an amazing discussion with these student leaders and mr ibanks who is one of the mentors one of the leading forces in the space of student leadership abigail based on your position as head girl you must face from time to time different you know how do i put this now horrible situations situations that you're just like okay why me um am i doing what i need to do why am i doing this why i don't just go and be a regular student based on the different things that you face on a regular being head girl and stuff how do you balance the act because you still have your personal life you still have school life and all of that how do you balance the act all right so um thank you for that question you know, as prefects, head prefects, we are faced with, you know, difficulties, challenges each and every day, mm. you know, as individuals. We do break down sometimes, you know, I must say it, you know, we do break down sometimes. But as I've said before, you know, we have individuals, teachers at Black River High School who, you know, would give us a pep talk one and two times. Um, as prefects, we do fail um, sorry to say, you know, no apologies, you know, but just to keep it frank, we do fail sometimes, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, um, time management is one of the, the most important things that is being overlooked. You know, as a prefix, we have to, you know, write our schedules, you know, prioritize our goals, right? Every day that we have, you know, stuff to do, we, as a head yeah. girl, I write them down so that I don't get 
you know, distracted or I don't fall short mm -hmm. because trust me, when those work pack up on you, it is not mm -hmm. um, it is not easy, right? And I tell people all the time, you know, it is okay to fail. You know, it is okay to fail. You are going to fall on your face sometimes. But what you need to do, you know, you fall right on the face, you lay down flat, and you stay there, and you develop techniques, and you strategize, how am I going to stand on my feet? How am I going to stand mm -hmm. so that I don't fall again? You know, that is one of the things yeah. that you have to do. And let me tell you, you see, when you stand strong, even if you book your tour one time, you will never fall again. So, you know, being a head prefect, you have to leave school sometimes, you know. But the one of the main things that you have to do, you have to get the notes from people. You have to read up. You know, many persons would say that they go to school, you know, you're, you're, you're a nine to five job. It is more like and nine to 12, nine to the other day, mm -hmm. you know, we don't get breaks. We don't get breaks, but at the end of the day, we have to prioritize. We have to set our goals yes. straight and we have to ta tackle it as we go along. You know, some days we just have to freestyle because it is never easy. Freestyle. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> prioritize, prioritize the goal, write down your schedules. If you have a meeting, write them down and that mm. is how you're able to manage everything and stay on top of your game. Thank you so much, Abigail. Boy, I, I really hope students, teachers, you know, persons of the wider school community are listening because I believe this is a very important conversation that we're having here on Campus Connection. Um, we're going to take a final word from each of our guests this evening. Kimberly, we'll start with you. One sentence on youth leadership. What the vi what vision you have for Jamaica and the world at large? All right, and to that question, I will say Jamaica Prefix Association's tagline, which is "Step up, stand out." It's your role; make your impact as prefix. Powerful, powerful. Abigail, your one sentence. Coming, coming. So I want to give you my theme, theme, theme that we have, um, or SWPBIS, um, association. Mm -hmm. You know, Miss Swan is going to be a little bit proud of me right now, but I must say, you know, as or SWPBIS, um, motto. Can I say it? Can I say? Sure. It? Am I allowed to say it? It is more than one sentence, but all right. So. Black River High School, we do, we create our own destiny. Our SWP BIS motto is respect is due to me and you. Respect yourself and property too. Safety, care, and responsibility lies with you. Black River High respect turn up for true. That is more than a sentence, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Abigail. Sorry, Banks. <laughs> Your uh, sentence. Uh, my, my thing is just to the prefects, to the youth leaders, continue to lead, continue to create your destiny and continue to be great. And we love you and we support you all the way. All right, all right. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being a part of this discussion this evening on the Family Station Love 101 and all the very best for the future. All right, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. All right, take thank care, you. take care. All right. Very, very interesting conversation there. Youth leadership. Um, we, you know, we, we, we need to continue this conversation sometime in the future. But in the meantime, February 2024 is Love 101 FM's 31st anniversary month. So, you know, February 6th, we'll have youth leadership part two and then the 13th love and relationships february 20 love and relationships part two and then love for entrepreneurship you saw what we did there love 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 yeah <laughs> all right special thanks to my co-host anista samuels dr nadine blair jermaine johnson timoy butler shanae smith david sutton raquel robertson 
Ruth Lawrence, our guest this evening. You, our listeners and our viewers, thank you so much for making it Campus Connection. We are looking forward to serving you yet again next week. I am Jonathan Fletcher, and we'll be back with more Wagwan Pan Campus. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.